are. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Black Out Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Joining as always by my co-host, Karen. And we're live on a Tuesday, ready to do some podcasts and find us everywhere you find podcasts. Leave us reviews on our Apple Podcasts, you know, leave us comments on our website and YouTube, vote in the polls. There's a bunch of ways to do that. And we take that feedback and we make a show out of it every week. So if you leave feedback, it'll be heard, you know, and uh, try to keep it nice. Try to keep it the same energy that we put out. Uh, the official weapon of the show is... The taser? No, it's not. No, it is not. It has not been for a while. Ah! <laughs> Y'all wonder why I pose. I like, that week I've been posing. I've been posing to thank. <laughs> It is the folding chair. The folding chair. That's correct. And the unofficial sport. <laughs> bullet ball. A bullet ball. Extreme. Extreme. Uh, yeah. I guess we can go ahead and just kind of get right into the show. You know, unless you want to banter. I don't. I don't know. I've, sometimes I see podcasts now. I feel like they they have a banter segment. It's always like. Five, fifteen, ten minutes of them just talking about just just just, just nothing, just, just bullshitting. Yeah, I didn't have any banter prepared for the day, but I about to say I didn't I didn't have any uh banter uh prepared for the day, but uh I know uh one thing uh uh the the trend of uh because we was listening to like some uh nerdy podcasts. Mm-hmm. The trend of oh hold on, so it sounds like we're about to banter. Hold on, okay. we need some banter music. Okay. Go ahead. Karen, please go ahead and banter away. Oh, okay, and this was unprepared, so who knows where this is gonna go. But um, we was listening to some podcasts, and they was talking about this trend that uh, like I think they said like the Apple, the new Apple iPhone, you'll be able to play games on it. Well, you can play games on the phone now. Yes, you can, but they want to charge you PlayStation and Xbox and Nintendo prices to, for a fucking phone. And um, I haven't tried it, hadn't did it, but they said it is the top of the line. But maybe I'm, oh, bitch, I got a big ass TV. I'm playing on my fucking TV. I'm, if I'm paying $70, I want 70 inches. It's, it's so uh, it's the iPhone 15. One of the big hooks of the presentation is it's going to, they want this to be the best and number one gaming platform for the next generation of games. They now have the technology that it can play, not just like, you know, the games that people are, you know, oh, you're playing uh, Bubble Bobble or you're playing fucking, you know, Bejeweled or whatever. They're like, no, we want you to play like Resident Evil on this con- on, on, on this on this phone. Now, I have questions. How's it going to eat up the battery life? Obviously, is a big question. Um, but the main thing that people were a little shocked by was the games are going to cost what it costs to buy a game on a PlayStation or Xbox. So Resident Evil is $60. That's kind of uh that's kind of controversial at this moment is because Resident Evil 4 whatever whichever one is out the remake um they're saying you can get that for $40 on your PlayStation and your Xbox and even if you have a portable like Steam Deck you can get it cheaper. So people are like, why would I pay $60 for it on a on Apple when I could pay less for it? I do think that is interesting. I think they'll work the kinks out. I'm I I'm not a I, I'm not gonna be an early adopter of this iPhone. I just got the we just finished paying off our phone, so it's off our bill right now. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, that phone bill looked nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's like when you pay off your car, you know. It's like I'm looking mm-hmm. at that phone bill every month, like that's it. This how I can live with this. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna get Uber East tonight. I can do it. <laughs> I can do it. Um, so, uh, I'm sure we'll get a phone eventually, mm-hmm. but, uh, I'm not, this is not the selling point for me. I don't game on my phone, you know, not, 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 not intense games. I could play like Marvel snap yeah. or I think Agrit Supco had a puzzle, like, can, you know, yeah. match four game. I can do that. I, I play Stardew Valley on my phone. I play games on my phone. I have a backbone. So, <clears throat> and I just, which you barely use. I just. I know, right? Mm-hmm. The, and, and the thing is, and, and and I think it has to do with the with the 
structure of the backbone itself because it's like its own community, which is great, but it's not a lot of people in the community. So when you go on, it's like it's not a lot of I don't have a lot of friends. Maybe there's people that are out here in the backbone world that I don't know nothing about. I don't know. But it's like they created this thing around something and you go and it's like, I guess I'm here, I guess. And so that's that's mainly why I don't play it that much. Right. Nah, I believe you. Um, I just like I said, I'm and I'm not denigrating you. I Mm -hmm. just think. Is not necessarily something that everybody's doing. It could be a generational right. thing too, Correct. where like maybe younger people are like, "Yeah, game on your phone, not a big deal." But uh, and as people especially own less shit, like people getting less apartments, less yeah. more in debt, less houses. Maybe people are kind of on some like, "Hey, uh, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm not gonna actually be owning a TV." So I'm gonna be playing on my game on my on my phone, but for that I could see. Yeah, but... I think that's interesting. I have some banner to add. Go uh, ahead. I first, I I really want to make a uh, Monte Cristo sandwich at some point, and I need to go ahead and do that because I have all okay. the ingredients. And I like a good Monte Cristo. Yeah, I was watching American Dad, and they had an episode about being stuck and trapped in a buffet. And someone brought up the the croque monsieur or something like that, which is like the French version. The Monte Cristo is the American version. I think the American twist on the croque monsieur or whatever. Okay. And um, I was like, man, that does sound good. And uh, yeah, I just, they're so random, but I just woke up and was like, I want to make one of these. And I and like, don't looked on my phone. As much. Yeah, they're not, not on a lot of menus. Not like it used to be, right? I looked up my phone to see, like, is this like hard to make? Because I don't, like, I've never made one myself. I've only ordered it in a in a place, and I don't, and it just isn't very often. I'm in a place that serves them. I think Amelie's has them. Yes, Amelie's has them, but and then there used to be a brunch place over in South Park Mall area that had them that was really good, but I think they closed. Right. And uh, yeah, so I I think I'm gonna have to do this. I got all the ingredients, uh, so I don't know. I've been I've been eating less than I normally eat, but I've been or I've been the things I want to eat is like I'm I'm like uh, adamant about like making them. Like I wanted cheeseburgers. Mm-hmm. And I went to the store and bought just the stuff for cheeseburgers today, <laughs> except for the, the meat. <laughs> right. It was in the car. Right? I was like, oh, yeah, I got the bread. I got everything. But but I didn't get the hamburgers. <laughs> yeah. It was in the car. I slapped my forehead. I was like, well, ah, oh, fuck. And the was like, what's wrong? I was like, I bought everything for the fucking burgers, but the burgers. It was hilarious. I was like, did you put it on this? I said, no. I said, yep. I said, that's why we be walking into the grocery store, be adding shit to the list, because that's what I remember. I was like, let me put it on here, because if it's not on that list, bitch, I forget. Yep. Get to talking. Next thing you know. Well, that's been the banner, everybody. Who's ready for some uh, for some new uh, some news? I bet I bet y'all like to hear some news now that we've been bullshitting for five minutes. <laughs> we've been bullshitting. You know that's how it goes. Uh, here's some. Let's talk about this news. Let me see what you want to be. You better move your body. You better move your feet. And I want to grow. Show me what's cool. Riding, caring, baby. LGBTQ news. Trying to take it down, but we're still around. We live. We live. Trying to still shine, but we on the ride. We live. We live. But you can't do what we got to do. We live. We live. Black guy from Tim. LGBTQ news. Woo! Woo! Man, the people that make the music segments for our show. So fucking talented. I clear we got some tired of the ass fans, don't we? Just in the um, I was just playing like random stuff from playlists of save songs I have. Mm-hmm. And before the show started, that motherfucking black capitalism, like the, like the the whole on. version. Yes. Yeah. It came on, and I was just like, oh man, so fucking talented. I hope people are t- following these artists, telling them they're talented. Yes, liking their music, telling you know, all their friends. Whenever we do a live show, we get to play it in front of our audience. It's so beautiful to watch everybody who knows all the words mm-hmm. get down. So get their life. All right, let's talk about LGBTQ news. Um, Canada. Mm-hmm. Issues a travel advisory to LGBTQ plus citizens who are visiting the United States. Okay. 
the new travel advice warns of state laws that may affect LGBTQ plus travelers. Mm-hmm. We're we're that country now, y'all. Yes, we are. And, and I think what's interesting is <clears throat> the xenophobic Republicans who hate every country but ours, who laud freedom in America. And, you know, everything's better over here. It's better for the blacks to be over here. You don't like it, go to Africa. It's better for the gays to be over here. Oh, they'll go go to the Middle East. It's better for, uh, you know, women. Oh, they'll make you wear a burqa or some shit. It's always some bullshit. But as they erode the rights that supposedly gave us the freedoms, as marginalized people that made this country supposedly the best country on the earth, they still want to keep that it's the best country because in their mind, their bigotry is not as bad as the bigotry of other countries. It's, hey, we might hate our gays, but we don't hate them the way they hate them over there. And ultimately, I love that Canada is kind of like, nah, man, y'all the ghetto. The ghetto. We the shithole country that Trump kept talking about. Yeah. Uh, Some states have enacted laws and policies that may affect uh, 2SLGBTQI plus persons. Uh, that's a new acronym for me. I haven't, that, that might be a Canadian thing. Mm-hmm. The update posted Tuesday under the laws and culture section of the Global Affairs Canada's United States travel advice reads, it further advises travelers to research state and local laws in areas they plan to visit. And this is one of the problems with treating uh, America like 50 different nations is, and this is the Supreme Court has allowed this to, to just it fester. Mm-hmm. But it's like, oh, no, it's okay if enough people believe in bigotry in your state, then it's fine for people not to have rights. So, yeah, we know we hold these inalienable rights to be true, blah, 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 self-evident, blah, 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 blah. But what, what we really mean is, unless they don't believe in that in Tennessee, then shit, then no gay people, no blacks. You know, it is what it is that they just don't want to deal with that down there. Now, how do we measure if they don't want to deal with that? Well, we measure it by votes. Is everyone allowed to vote equally and fairly? No. But if enough people in enough power want to keep it, keep people subjugated, we're just going to allow that too in the Supreme Court because fuck it. Um, And so, yeah, I'm glad another state called us out. It used to be a time, though. Another country. Another country. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Cam. It used to be another time uh, back in, like, this is, I think... Think about the civil rights movement where under, you know, the the King and uh, uh, Malcolm X era of civil rights, right? Mm-hmm. Their biggest tactic was what? Peaceful, nonviolence, go on TV. TV was a kind of a new thing, globalized mm-hmm. TV, globalized news. We're going to go on TV. We're going to get all the cameras pointing at us. And we're going to get fucked up gonna embarrass him we're gonna get fucked up like we're, white people are going to savage us and our children and everything sick dogs hoses it just horrible brutality that you the kind you the kind that you don't want to believe is real the kind that a country was so ashamed of they take it out of their history book so that the what? kids don't know what happened and it worked why because the rest of the world saw the great shame of America like just this is what you do to your people. Some of these people fought wars for you, mm-hmm. died for you. Come back and you come back come home back. and you hang at them. And you're and this is what you're doing because they want to, let me check the notes, go to school? What the fuck is wrong with your country? And white people and the people in power were so fucking embarrassed. They started passing laws. There was Momentum was gathered because it was like, fuck, Germany's looking at us like, damn. You know what I mean? <laughs> so and that's bad when they look at yeah, us like that. Right. And so I I'm thinking, I don't know that that will happen now. No, people don't have shame anymore. I don't know that that will happen now. I don't know what that says about us. Maybe we just got used to the internet and global con, mm-hmm. but it desensitized. The 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 I don't know if there's a national shame that could happen that would make our Supreme Court do the right thing. No. I don't know there's a national shame that would happen that would move Congress, that would make Republicans mm-hmm. do anything but just self-preservation of their own power. I don't know if that is even possible. We've come that 
it, far feels like the wrong word. We've gone that far backwards, I guess. Yes, that far yeah. backwards. And and the, the thing that's fucked up about it is the people that have no shame want to be in power. They implement all this shit and all they do and we've had enough ebbs and flows when it comes to this country. You know what happened? Taxes are going to go up. You know what happened? When you defund things, when you deregulate things, you know what happens? All of a sudden, shit like uh, your water isn't clean anymore. Your air isn't clean anymore. Shit start tearing down. All of a sudden, you can't get nobody to come and fix shit. Like, you know, if people paying attention, y'all do know we a few days away from the government shutting down. And these motherfuckers in Congress and Senate and shit talking about uh, now is the time to pass the budget. Well, we asked y'all a few. We Everybody knew this date was coming up. They was like, can we just pass something to keep the government function while we just while well, so we can go through the normal process? They're like, no, let's sit down, pull out the goddamn T charts and do the bitch right now. And everybody's like, y'all know we can't do that. It's fucking stupid. This doesn't make sense. And they're like, no. So we are like a few days away from the government fucking shutting down for real, for real. Like, like everything gonna start running. Your mail gonna start running. Like, you know, like the this, this shit that's supposed to run ain't gonna run no more. And then they was talking about why y'all blaming us? Because bitch, it's your fault. It's your fault. Yes, you are the one to blame. And I think also the dysfunction, there was a shame in having a dysfunctional government uh not even a few years ago there was a shame and they're like oh your government can't do basic things it promises its citizens they can do and what i'm saying is uh i think the dysfunction is the point yes so now you have you have not every republican but a enough republicans who will be using this as a selling point like we shut the government down yay not a Oh no, the government is like, and and if you give the red meat to your people, and you go, it's Democrats, you know, it's 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 Lauren Boebert getting fingered at the fucking Beetlejuice and being like, uh, Democrats, they'll just say something, something Democrats, and of course their constituency will eat it up, but some of us will too. Yes, we will. Some of I I, I don't even it hasn't even happened yet. I guarantee you, if it does, it becomes the past. You'll see a few people on your timeline who are supposed to be liberal people going some some Joe Biden. I don't they won't even know how to it won't have to make sense. It won't even matter. That's where we are now. Yeah, and no uh, shame. I think that goes back to this story, which is Canada going, don't go down there, nigga. They are fucking gay people. Don't go down there. Uh let's see. Um Parents of trans kids urged the Senate to oppose online safety bill that could harm LGBTQ plus youth. More than 100 parents of transgender and gender expansive kids have signed an open letter opposing a federal bill aimed at protecting kids from harmful content online. LGBTQ plus advocates have criticized the bill, arguing that Republicans will use it to prevent kids from seeing LGBTQ plus content. Right, because Mm -hmm. who gets to decide what is dangerous? To me, I think it's dangerous for, say, uh, a person that wants to have sex with kids to make a video soliciting children. Right. What the Republicans think is dangerous for a kid to see is anyone being gay. Huge difference to me. Yes, you know what I mean? Is. What like oh, uh, this person is happily married uh, to a person of the same gender. Oh no, 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 no! Children can't see that. Um. So yeah, you can't trust the this. This is that that thing where like a Republican organization will be named something and then do the opposite of the name. You know, yes, they one do. million moms, and it's just two dads from Wyoming who hate gay people. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's what this is, where it's like. We're going to save the kids with an online safety uh, legislation. Like, okay, we do need to make the internet safer for kids. Yeah. And uh, one of the big things we want to do is make sure they don't see any content from gay people. Like, wait a minute. What? That's not on my list of concerns. That's not on my list, but it is on theirs. Yeah. Um. So I guess it's called KOSA. COSA is the name of the bill. It's called the Kids Online Safety Act. Uh, the parents described the bill as dangerous and misguiding, misguided, I'm sorry. 
Um, they said that our kids have, uh, I said, we hold deep sympathy for parents whose kids have been harmed by big tech social media companies and their abusive business practices. Our kids have also been harmed by these companies. Greed, their addictive design, and their intrusive surveillance, their failure to address online hate, bullying, and abuse. But legislation like KOSA, COSA, would make our kids less safe, not more safe. It would grant extraordinary new power to right-wing state attorney generals. Once again, once you go down to the state level, the mm-hmm. Supreme Court uh, is just hands off. Like we used to have, and the Supreme Court used to be able to be. You could rely on them as like, well, they'll 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 put a ruling out. They'll they'll let us know. They'll call balls and strikes. You can't say that anymore. Um, when you have attorney generals that are literally suing to get the power to legislate someone who goes out of the state to have an abortion. Right. You're these they're running them like nations, you know. Uh to dictate content, uh younger users can see on social media, cutting off kids from life saving online resources at community. That's huge because anytime you talk about marginalized people, especially LGBTQ kids, when you don't have community support, you can find online community support. And a lot of times, um that's the only source of support. If your parents just happen to be religious bigots, if your community is one of these communities yeah. where they're like outing, that they're, they're forcing teachers to out kids to their parents, where, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're one of these book burning, book banning states. Sometimes online is the only time you're going to find out what's safe for you. Resources like, uh, you know, homes and p- safe places to stay, uh, resources where you can find other people who've had this experience and can talk to you about it because it's so isolating and lonely. And the rate of people dying by, of kids dying by suicide for LGBTQ people is extremely high. So we're talking about life-saving resources that I don't want a Republican attorney general to make the call on what a kid can see. Right. Uh, these are the same attorney generals that are actively working to ban gender affirming health care to save kids li- that saves kids' lives, criminalize drag performances, and label families that accept our children as groomers and child abusers. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just funny because some people will be tricked by this. If you put this on a on a ballot mm-hmm. and you say, Oh, it's the KOSA, the Kid Online Safety Act, how many people are gonna vote for it because they just think it's the right thing? Correct. And don't know anything about it. All right. Uh, jury awards one hundred thousand dollars to a Kentucky couple uh, who was denied a marriage license by ex county clerk Kim Davis. Do you remember Kim Davis, Karen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck her. She's the reason why a lot of this bullshit got started. When the when the when the when the thing first started and everybody could go, all she had to do was fucking stamp and go on, and she fucking fold her arms and dug her heels in. Yeah, I remember her homely ass uh, trying to object, and it felt so fake anyway. Like. Mm-hmm. It, it was it felt like one of it felt like that applehead girl who was like, uh, I didn't get into college because I'm white. And you're like, you know that's not why you got into fucking college, Abby. Like, you know that's not it, but someone's gonna take this to the Supreme Court to try to get affirmative action taken out of colleges. Um <clears throat> but the couple who sued was awarded a hundred thousand dollars. Yes, fuck her. Yeah. Uh, she even was briefly jailed in 2015 over her refusal, which she based on her belief that marriage should only be between a man and a woman. Uh, a jury in Ashland, Kentucky, awarded David Ermold and David Moore each $50,000 after deliberating on Wednesday. A second couple who sued James Yates and Will James Yates and Will Smith, not that Will Smith, a different a Will different Smith, Will Smith were Smith. awarded no damages. I wonder why they, there was like two, uh, hey, snooze, you lose, baby. Yeah, you should have been number one. Now you're number two. Refresh, baby, because we got three boxes. Oh, all right. I'll be right back. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Should be back in like five seconds. Okay. On the screen. Yes, sir. But uh, Just so people looking, I want it to look better. Mm, no problem. But yeah, it's just interesting that uh, they ended up um, winning that case. Uh, it would be interesting because it's been long enough that they could have been married and divorced by now. Like maybe that's why they each got fifty thousand. It's like, listen, uh, we didn't, we didn't make it. So he gonna take his half, and I'm gonna take my half, and we gonna. But at least we got money out of it. Yeah, but I mean, money's no 
you know, I mean, listen, money's cool, but it's no consolation for the bigotry they face. You know? <laughs> right. Oh, let's see. Here's the last one for this. The View mm-hmm. co-host claims that gay people can recognize one another through scent. Oh, through scent? Through scent. Hmm. It, does it smell like glitter? Right. Does it right. smell like rainbow? She made is her it com- strawberry scent? How, do, how does it smell? You let me know. Yeah, what is, like, are you... We can't smell it because we're not gay. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Like we just walking around like 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 we got COVID. Like we can't smell nothing. <laughs> but gay people have an extra scent uh, hormone or something. They go like, hmm, it's, it's getting real gay up in here. Is that, like can they? Is that how? Is that what gaydar I, is? I smell gay. Right. Like you think? Ooh, girl, I think it's a party ten miles away. I smell the gayness. If you think somebody is straight, bring a gay person around. You know, you on a date. Like, <laughs> Mask your scent. I need to know. I need to know. This person, they I mean, I don't know. Let me bring my man around and see what's happening. Uh, she made her comment during it's Sunny Hostin, uh, or Hostin, I think. Her her co-host of the, the View. She made her comment during the hot topic segment on Monday's show while discussing Naked Attraction, a new full frontal nudity dating reality series on Mac streaming platform. In the series, potential mates are gradually revealed completely naked for their feet from their feet up as a contestant decides which person they feel most attracted to. God damn it, we don't care about. All right. All right. right. What are the shows? At this point, honestly, I'm I'm making a new show, guys. I got I I'm I'm telling y'all before I pitch it to HBO, but I'm bringing a, a new show. It's called Glory Hole. Okay. Uh it's called, <laughs> called Glory Hole Dating. And what it is, is we put a hole in the wall. And people put their genitals through the hole. And then they have sex through the hole. And if there's a connection, they decide if they want to date that person. Because fuck it. We just out here. We just out here. The shit don't make no <laughs> goddamn sense. What? It's called Suck a Dick Dating, guys. It's a new show I got. Uh, so Shout out to Nick and Richard. This don't make no goddamn sense. You just show up and you, you suck somebody's dick. And then we reveal your faces to each other after you suck the dick. And if there was a connection made through the dick sucking, now you got to get married. And you got to get married. That's how that episode. ridiculous these shows sound to me. Um. Anyway, uh, she said that her husband, ben, they ben, her and her husband binge watched the show and learned things that I never heard in my life. Uh, she then said uh, research has found that gay men have different scent attractions. Oh, so not just all gay. So lesbians, sit down, please. Oh, y'all tonight. get out of here. Y'all beat it. My bisexual people, this one ain't for mm, you. This one's not for you. you. Only gay men got the extra scent. You, you, you ain't got the scent smell. That's, that's why the app is called Sniffies. That's why. Oh, no. Please don't go to it. Please don't go to uh, it. Found that gay men have different scent attraction and that homosexual people have a nose for each other. And gay people can actually smell under their arms in a blindfold test and can tell which person is gay and which person isn't. Okay. Actually, not to debunk the science, but that's just the difference between straight and gay guys. It's straight dudes don't care about their appearance, so they probably stink. <laughs> and in the game, that, that shit is actions. They're just going by whoever smelled like they took a shower. That's that's not <laughs> that's not science. No, that's not. Anyone can figure this out. Uh, yeah, 2005 Swedish study research study found that homosexual and heterosexual men respond differently to odors involved in sexual arousal. In the study, researchers isolated testosterone derivative produced in men's sweat and an estrogen-like compound in women's urine. Both were suspected of being pheromones that attract affect other people's behavior. Researchers examined which parts of the human brain responded to most of both scents. The estrogen-like compound activated the hypothalamus of straight men. The testosterone, testosterone der- derivative did the same in straight women. Hypothalamus governs sexual behavior and bodily hormones. However, this research didn't suggest that gay men can determine whether other men are gay through sin alone. They also found that gay men's brain, brains responded like straight women. So basically, gay men get turned on by the smell of men. Right. That makes and sense. And yeah, that like what? How's that? 
if if you're gay, yeah. And she you. just was like, yada yada yada. See, that's why you need writers and a staff. And yes, you do. You need any fact checkers. You just go somebody would have vetoed that. No, no, ma'am, you can't say right. that. Right. You just be saying shit. You like mm-hmm. I heard one time maybe I had said no. No, look at the screen. Please read the screen, ma'am. Research says Mm-mm. what research. Where's the research department? When they start going off yeah, like this, is it department. a researcher in the back? Like, oh God, come on, God damn it! <laughs> the reference, like my whole job, she went off script. My whole, they be like, I just told her that's not true. What the fuck is happening here, Sonny? You couldn't have told me you was gonna say bring this up in high topics. <laughs> we just went over this I in the meeting. I would have fucking. Oh my god! I would have researched this. I mean, I mean, my computer right here. Come on, I would have put it on the screen. All right, let's go to the next segment. All right, regular ass news. Uh, Hassan Minaj got caught out here. Um, you want something else? No, we had. Did we didn't talk about this on the show? Have we? Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> Hassan Minaj got caught out here uh, using emotional truths in his stand up. And I'm not gonna lie. When I first saw this article, I saw the headline. It's like Hassan Minaj's emotional truths is in the New Yorker. Uh, in his stand up specials, the former Patriot Act. Host often recounts heroin experiences he faces an Asian American and Muslim American. Doesn't matter that much of it never happened. It's by Claire Malone. And when I saw the headline, I mostly was like, why they hate no Hassan? Like, stand up comedians are not 100% factual. They never have been. They, they, oh, I broke up my girlfriend last night, six months ago, a year ago. Never, it, you know. Some silly, some silly story that just never happened. I thought it was that. And so I went, ah, whatever. Like, I guess it's his, he's about to, he might get the daily show. So maybe this is like some hate that he's catching that is, it, you know, just people trying to like, they did the thing. Mm-hmm. Trevor Noah was go find every old joke he made that, you know, wouldn't cut the mustard today, you know, that right. shit. But uh, I was in a group chat with like Andy and Randolph and shit. And they were like, oh, nice. No, this is, is pretty bad. And I'm like, well, fuck it. Let me go read the shit then. Oh, my God. It's a New Yorker piece, so you know it's so long you know, as So you know it's like 2,000 words. And I read every fucking word. The long and short of it is this. Uh, most people will probably think of it the way I thought of it before reading it, like what I just described. Like, oh, this is whatever, comedic license. And they're relying on that. And I'm assuming he's kind of relying on that, too. But I watched his last stand-up special. Have you seen it? Mm-mm. Okay, I watched it. Um, and I liked it, too. I liked it, honestly. And um, when you have watched the special and you know what's in the, the piece, yeah, what he did was wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 I wish it was less... It's, it's black and white for me in this one, because... In the stand-up special, he doesn't just tell these stories, and it turns out that these stories are almost completely fabricated, you know? And, like, they're not necessarily joke stories. They're, like, things that he made funny, but behind Hassan is, like, a media screen, right? And he tells the stories. And then shows you evidence that they're true on the screen. So mm. he's saying stuff like. So you're assuming what he's saying is facts. Right. He's saying there he was a man. Yeah. There was a man who worked in counterterrorism. Who tried to set me and my Muslim friends up by playing basketball with him and shit. He tried to set us up to take the fall as terrorists. Because, you know, a lot of what we call like stopping terrorism after 9-11. A lot of it was almost entrapment. It was. The person actually could, didn't have access to a bomb or any materials or whatever. And some FBI government agent would show up offering the person 
the the access to some tools of terrorism that they never would have got on their own. And then you arrest the person like, ah, you took the bait. You said you were going to do it. Well, Hassan in these stories is like, you know, uh, telling stories where, he, where in the story he's the hero. He getting slammed up against a police mm-hmm. car. He's, you know, being targeted by entra- for entrapment by this homeland security guy. Turns out it's not true. Uh, the person wasn't even um, able to um, to be there to do this shit. Like they were, they were in jail or some shit. You know, like it's impossible mm. for it to be true. And when asked about it, he said, "Well, it's emotional truth. It didn't happen to me, but I heard it happen to somebody maybe in another town, or it could have happened, or whatever." But that's not how it was presented in your special. Sounds like in another right in another spe- in another joke, it was. I got a a paper powder delivered to my house in an envelope. I opened the envelope, powder spilled all over my baby. I thought, oh my God, they killed it's anthrax. Me and my wife went to the hospital. Our baby was in the hospital to get it turned out it wasn't anthrax, but oh my God, you know, all because I stood up and spoke truth to power about the Saudi prince and all this shit. Turns out that didn't happen. Like he says. Well, not with some powder, but it didn't get on my daughter, and we didn't need to take her to the hospital. Well, that's a pretty important thing mm-hmm. to 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 lie about, you know. And it I, every lie makes them look historic. I mean, heroic. It almost reminds me of that dude Steve Renazzisi from he was on uh, the the fantasy football TV show. I forget what that show was called. Out the league. He was on the league. I loved. I used to love that show, and. Um, Turned out he got caught in a lie where he basically made himself a hero on 9-11. And I was in one of the buildings. My girl, my girlfriend worked in the build, building. I saved a taxi driver. And you find out none of this shit happened. And it's one of those lies where it's like, why did you make that lie? Yes. It doesn't make you more funny. You didn't have to. And also, from my understanding, some of this stuff, he was having like evidence flash behind That's him. what I said earlier. Yeah. And so it's like... It's, well, literally, and I, it's, it's literally on the screen. Like, he'll play... It's like he's saying to you as an audience, you don't believe me? Play the clip. And then they play like a news clip. Mm. Such and such was arrested by this man. It's like, that's him. That's the officer Mike. And then you find out, not true. Said a girl stood him up for prom where he she said she'd go to the prom with him. He showed up to her house. This is a different special. Mm-hmm. Showed up to her house on prom night, and she was dating. A, she had a white dude that was taking her out, and she didn't tell him that she wasn't going to go with him, and it's because he was he was brown, right? Mm-hmm. Turns out that's not true. He asked her weeks before. She told him no. Uh, he didn't show up to her prom night at her house or anything like that. She just already had a date. He, he says she's racist and then like gives enough identifying information for people to figure out who she is on Facebook with oh, pictures no. and all this type of shit. Possibly she getting harassed and shit off of some bullshit he made up. It's it's really fucking bad. It's right. not like, like it's not a, hey man, it's just comedic license thing. Like it, this is beyond that to me in a way that is to me fucked up, especially when you are making yourself out to be the hero. And part of the reason people want you to have a, the Daily Show, part of the reason people want to watch a stand-up is because they're rooting for the guy they think is standing up for, for right, standing up against these tyrants mm-hmm. and putting himself on the front lines. And I'm sorry, when you hear a story of somebody's daughter almost getting killed with anthrax or terrorized by it, you, you, you want to root for that person. Like, yo, mm-hmm. I want you to win, bro. And so I think it's such a um, flagrant disregard of truth and unnecessary. I truly think you can make these same points as a brown person in America without making yourself the literal hero of the story. Right. People would still be like, yeah, if if you just went, what if a guy was playing ball with me and he turned out to be a white dude that was trying to entrap me with something? Well, that really happened to somebody right don't have to be me don't Mm -hmm. i don't even need to be near the story it's just hypothetical we watched um tony baker do a whole fucking stand-up of just hypothetical shit yes we did Mm -hmm. you know just he everything he's afraid of every all fear and it was funny as shit and none of us walked out of there like man he lied to us Mm -hmm. he didn't say someone broke in my house and did this he went yeah what if 
You know what I mean? It's and I it, I, I don't know, man. I thought that was so it was so egregious and just short sighted. Because mm-hmm. it only takes like the bigger you blow up, eventually people look into your shit. Right. And I think what happens is a lot of people they like you and they don't want to take their like back. I'm not telling you take your like back. If you like them, you like them. But I saw people defending this shit as like, well, you know, I mean, it's not that bad. Da, da, da. Uh, this is what comedians do. I'm like, did you read the article and did you watch the special? That's my first two questions. If you didn't, you don't know what you're talking about. And it's easy for me to chalk it up to that because I watched both. Right. And I read both. I read the, I read the piece and I saw the special. So I absolutely do know the exact moments they're talking about where you're like, oh, no, he played that as 100% real. Mm. Double down on it so you couldn't disregard it. But... I when I see like a fan of ours try to like act like this ain't a big deal, I can't help but think like, what do you think we do for a living? If you found out we was lying over the course of these twenty some hundred episodes, y'all know what we y'all not, wouldn't we feel not, nothing. We're not really married. We ain't been married right. no twenty no twenty something years. It's all just entertainment to us. <laughs> like we all wouldn't. <laughs> well, Actually, that's I, shit. You know, I would be upset. The woman we have on our show every year. That's not my mama. Just a lady we met at Cracker Barrel. We said, "Come on, do a show. We're gonna pretend like <laughs> just, just, just the act, just the actress." And when she leave, we just Venmo her a few hundred dollars. Right? <laughs> like real, real shit don't matter to people. That ain't what makes shit funny. Right? Like part of what make people funny is like, damn man, that that's real. They they said some real shit. I'm and when and like and what's interesting about it is, you're on stage as a comedian. You have a license to be silly. Right. We're not even holding you to some journalistic standard. You Mm-mm. put that on yourself showing us all this goddamn evidence. You could have just been the silly guy. You know, or you could have made these same points like I said hypothetically or whatever. That's, you know, you can still speak truth to power without being it's the difference between being like I got some jokes about racism and being like I was on the front lines of the march. I got hit with a brick in the head. And you're like we have footage. You definitely were not Martin Luther King. Mm-mm, mm-mm, what are you doing? Mm-mm. You was way in the back with Bernie. Right. <laughs> right. But at least Bernie told the truth. He was in the back. He was there, though. We, we didn't lie. Yeah, man. So I, 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 it felt very lacking to me that his, I guess, um, his, his uh, excuses felt bad to me. And they even, when they bring up Patriot Act, they were like, you know, people that worked there were like, yeah, man, he was hostile towards the fact checkers even. Like, it was hard to, and and listen, working on game theory, some of those people worked at Patriot Act. And the fact checking job is so fucking important. Yes, it is. Their job is, people underestimate their job, and they are very, very good with their job. They are them will actually people, like literally will actually so, is their whole job. I speak with a measure of authority on this in saying that Hey man, it's not impossible to do this job, but this is why I say this is why it's hard. This is why this is what make the best people better. This is what makes somebody better than another person is the person that can still make it funny while adhering to the box of rules that are, hey, got to be based in truth. Um, it matters, and it's not just a taste thing. It's a literal like I can't say blank. I can't say Coach K is racist. I can't say that. Because I can't prove that. I don't actually have any evidence to show that he's racist. I can feel a way. I can say people said that. Because if so, if I could find a clip of somebody saying it, I could say, well, this person said it. And let me put my commentary after that. But you can't just say shit. And you can't, when a fact checker says, well, actually, that was 1993, that's got to go into the piece somehow. Or mm-hmm. something got to come out. Or just, yeah. because you can't be like, well, I'm going to say it was 95 anyway. No, because you're going to have somebody that's going to be like, well, y'all didn't, this is not truth. Right. So, yeah, man, I actually thought this was, was a bummer. So I'm not really rooting against this dude. I just think it's fucking like, and I thought he was funny. And I know other people have other issues. I'll talk to some people that don't. They they look at him almost like an Aquafina. Uh, they don't look, they don't, they look at, uh, what's the other dude? Um, The dude from... Master of None. Fuck, why am I drawing a blank? Oh, fuck. Uh, Simon Aziz. Aziz Asari. Yes. They look at them as some type of weird, like, 
amalgamation of black slang and black proximity and stuff. I, I I grew up in I grew up in North Carolina, so I think I have a lot less of whatever that type of gatekeeper in me. Like mm-hmm. to me, I I don't think I think I've seen so many people influenced by black slang and comedy and hip hop and entertainment. I'm not triggered by that kind of shit in the way that a lot of people are. I'm not saying they should or shouldn't be, but it's not my part. Like I'll, I'll never pick up on that. I've like, I've watched Hassan Minaj a couple times in specials and I've never got the like, Oh, he's acting like a black guy. It didn't, it didn't feel that way to me. Um, and I don't feel like I, I, there's a deeper discussion to be had about why is, if he would have sounded like a quote unquote white person, why is that not offensive and not only not offensive, but correct? Like many people will be like, that is the right way to be influenced by American culture mm-hmm. is to sound white. If yeah. you're a brown person, sound white. Yes. Sound black? No. And I'm like, even if you didn't grow up around black people, if you like stand up, name your top five. All you listening, name your top five. Who are your five most influential stand ups? Uh oh. It's probably three to five black people, three to five black dudes. That is an imprint on the comedy landscape. So when someone starts wanting to do comedy and their top five is Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, they're going to pick up some of that shit. Even if they make it their own, I'm not sitting there doing a Richard Pryor impression. Mm -mm -mm -mm. What is funny is black. And you can't take that away. And I not only support that, I'm in favor of that. I think we have, we Black people's culture is the number one export of America at this point. Yes, it is. American cool is Black cool and is so powerful, it moves the world. People in other countries who have never heard of a ghetto or never whatever until some rapper was breakdancing and shit. And now the best breakdancers in the world come from like fucking Thailand or some shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's to me, that's beauty. That's, that's the power of our culture. I know most, a lot of black people don't see it that way. Right. So I don't have that hang up about this. Not mm-hmm. that you shouldn't, but that's not my personal one. My hang up is why the fuck are you lying when you don't have to? Right. Like, what's the point of doing all this shit? If you got a lie, bro, like, you know, like if you found out like all the shit Richard Pryor said was a lie, you'd be like, oh man, that's pretty bad. Like all yeah, of this it... his... stand up was his life. Right. You know, so I, you know, I, you know, and I can see also if you're a comedian where your whole thing is I lie. Because there's some comedians where their thing is like, listen, I'm here to tell jokes. I'm silly. I'm wacky. I'm making up premises. You're never really going to get to know me. Right. But Hassan has decided to not be that person. He's decided to be a, almost like I'm giving a, a a personal journal of my life and it just happens to be funny. I'm telling you what I've been going through. Whereas like a Jerry Seinfeld would just be like, you ever think uh, Superman uh, should have put his underwear on the inside of his tights or something? And you're like, oh, I don't know this guy. He's just fucking Daffy Duck up here. He's, he's, he's Bugs Bunny. He's not, he's not trying to tell me. He's not going to ever break down and be like, Here's a real story about my life, right? Mm-hmm. The song's the opposite of that. So yeah, man, it just uh, it just felt whack. There you go. Um <laughs> whack. Kiki Palmer. What about her? On whether she and Darius Jackson are still together, says what did she say? Mind your business. Not mind your business. So we know what that means. Mm, well, mm-hmm. well, I don't know. We don't know what that means. don't know what it means. Okay, let's see if we can play it in context and see if we can... Uh, Me and him, yeah. we, we were trying to do the duck walk. Yeah. When we start doing the vogue again. It's all about it. We're all about it. Yeah. That well, was, are, you, are you all about him? Good. Yeah. <laughs> are we not, all y'all try, not y'all trying to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> they tried it on hey, the listen, day. Show. Hey, listen. You were a talk show host. You yeah. know. Yes. You know. And you kind of brought it up. We want to know if you're I'm happy. Howling. Are you I'm, happy? Yes. Life is good. I have nothing but gratitude, honestly. Seriously. For the relationship. <laughs> are y'all not trying to be specific? Well, are y'all together? You know, I'm going to take a page out of my girl Beyonce's book, Mind Y'all's Business. Oh! <laughs> yes, yes. We will do that. We, we will. We will. Okay, now we got to talk about your... Um, so I think that's a yes. 
Yes, right. Because at first I was going, but then I was like, for her to say that, the answer and the response like that got to be yes. One of the things where she don't want to come out and just give a straight up answer because just the way the internet and the black Twitter and her ears are to the street for shit like that. She's like, I don't want to deal with it. So if we're together, we're not together. It don't even fucking matter, which is the whole reason why he shouldn't have said nothing online in the first place. And y'all should have talked about it when y'all wouldn't have been here. I think it's funny because it's mind your business, but she definitely made content she did. about their business for over a month. And a lot of it was shitting on him. You know, it was fuck him, fuck that man, I'm gonna get a new man, da da da. It's the boyfriend uh, video. Made, yeah, I made a whole song with Usher. And the thing for me that I always was hoping was actually this that they were fine, they were together, that a hey, capitalize on the pandemonium. I do believe that first tweet was real. People keep trying to make it seem like a conspiracy. I don't think anybody's that good at being a conspiracy. People really went and found this nigga's page. People didn't even know that was her baby daddy at the time. So I do think he really did tweet that insecure shit because he's 28 or some shit. Mm-hmm. It's, really you know, it'll take a long time for people to be secure, to be honest. Yes, it does. Um, and all the changes they've gone through in the last couple of years. But I was really hoping that they were straight behind the scenes because I thought it was actually kind of corny. And I know it's part of the gender war shit, but it was kind of corny how many people were like delighting in like the destruction or the family falling apart. I thought that was mm-hmm. weird. First of all, all y'all have dated or date or are married to or whatever the fuck some toxic ass nigga to some extent. Because all niggas is kind of toxic, period. There's no perfect mo- like y'all ain't all dating bell hooks, readers and shit. Get right. the fuck out of here. So like her needing to break up was such a like uh, uh, parasocial uh, relationship moment of like people projecting onto her and then you see all these signs of they're at a party together when it's his birthday they're celebrating together he's talking about no i didn't break up with her that's my partner in crime and i'll say oh okay so they still together and i saw people like no they, she just needed some birthday dick or something like why are you in such hard denial about this this is this is you watching britney spears dancing with knives trying to tell me i'm the one being weird to say, say that, that I think that's, that's, that's very concerning. Yeah, like, uh, that's, I don't think that's safe. Yeah, you after know? her, after her boy, her ex husband was like, she used to wake me up in the middle of the night with knives. People like, ah, this is funny. Why she got them low rise draws on? I'm like, funny to you and funny to me are two different fucking things, my friend. Yes, it <laughs> is, and it's also one of those things where I don't have to live with the con- the, the 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 consequences. Uh, of being with this person that's a part of your life or not, and you know, it's one of the things where the internet be all over the fucking place when they and all she the one that loved that nigga, not me themselves, right? Right, she loved this nigga. She the one got the baby with him and be spending every day. Why yes. the fuck do I care if they together or not? He fucked up. Other than the entertainment value of like, oh, uh, here's some jokes. I'm not actually invested. I think mm-hmm. one of the reasons I think it's so savvy and brilliant though. She does recognize that black Twitter at some point is going to denigrate her for keeping her family together. Mm-hmm. Cause they they rather the optics of you throwing this nigga in the bushes and, and whatever that means for your family. They rather have the optics of that than the actual like, oh no, that's her family. Why would she do that? Yeah, that makes way more sense. Mm-hmm. I don't actually know her. And all I do is click like on her pictures. Why the fuck is she doing anything to please me? Uh, um, anything more than a surface level, right? You would think a rational person will say that. That's what I think. A rational person will be like, yeah, yeah, that, that made no rational. sense. I don't even know why I was rooting for that. But there's going to be a lot of irrational people because people on Twitter can be irrational. Yes, they can. And I saw her entertaining them and making content for them. Uh, and I worry, group of people. I worry that she was going to face either a backlash because to me, when you're entertaining those people, you're saying, I'm, I see what you say. Right. I'm serving you because I'm reading what you say. I'm reading what you're, I'm following you back, you know? So to find out that I think, you know, this means they're still together and that she really don't give a fuck if people get mad about it. And she's slow rolling it out so that it'll be enough time has passed to where y'all will be like, oh yeah, I guess I can't really be that mad. All the signs have been there that they're still together. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be fine now, but yeah, I was, I, it was a little bit like, to me, I thought it was, I don't want to say, it was It was like 
weird. I'll put it that way. It was weird yeah. when she was making that content for them. Yes, it was, you know, and it's also one of those things where uh your personal life and the internet are two separate things. And once you turn everything off and click the phones and turn the cameras and all that shit off, y'all got to look at each other and figure that shit out. Yeah, I think anybody that's, you know, I don't know. I think anybody that's living for the internet is always a thing that's going to make me go raise an eyebrow. Yes, it is. Because I'm always like, ah, the internet people aren't really support. They're, they're That's not real love. That's fake love. And even w- and once things get fucked up, they blame you. Yes, they do. So like if she came out, let's say six months from now and put out a sad video about how her man ain't shit and he don't uh, do whatever for the baby or or I don't know, we see him pop up and he gets married to some other woman or some shit. Mm-hmm. They're going to be there for the entertainment, but some of those same people that were quote unquote supporting her would immediately be clowning her. It's just, these are not, these aren't like real friends. So she's so savvy. She's been in the game so long. I, yeah, so I just, kid. I just think it was excellent how she played it. And if they're of one accord, that's even better. And it's, and it bodes well for him. If he was able to shut the fuck up for the last month and a half, that's all. even while she was out here, making this content or cucked it out of it. <laughs> if he was able to fucking suck it up and be like, Hey, I made my bed. This is what it is. Then I, I really think that that's actually pretty dope. And I hope, I hope they're happy together. Um, also like shout out to her. She's such a morning show guest type person. You mm-hmm. see how she just turn it on. Beautiful smile. Yeah. Just turn it on. Yeah. Cause I think, I think they said she was like the youngest person ever to do a talk show. Yeah. Just turns it on. She's man, America's sweetheart for real. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's get into some other stuff. Um, how about, uh, wait, do I have any fucking with black people I want to talk about? Let me look in that segment before I even touch on that. Uh, Oh, yeah, I do. There is a story I want to talk about. All right, so let's do some uh, fucking with black people uh, okay. real quick. We're just fucking with them people because they black. We're just fucking with them people because they black. We're just fucking with them black people. We're just fucking with them blacks. We're just fucking with fucking the black people. Hey, who? Hey, who? You are. Show is all right. White neighbor and German shepherd owning woman hose down prominent black doctor and their dinner party guests in plush New York City suburb because they were too loud. A leading doctor who threw a backyard party up for his sister's birthday in Queens claims the group was hosed with water by a racist white neighbor during a noise dispute. Uh, Dr. Eves De, Eves DeRossi, or DeRossi, I don't know, see you, DeRossi. Um, oh no, it's DeRosso, it's like that New Orleans shit, okay. Uh, who was the first U.S. physician to receive the COVID vaccine, and more than a dozen of his guests alleged that neighbor Marcus Rosebrook, Rose Brock, I'm sorry, a 48-year-old married father of two, violated their civil rights by attacking the group. A lawsuit brought by DeRosso and his guests were included in a who include a music executive and several prominent lawyers, also alleges an unnamed woman named as Jane Doe in the suit threatened them with a German Shepherd dog during the incident. Damn, they took it back to some real racism. Mm-hmm. Hoses and dogs? Boy, that's some classic like black and white racism. Okay, they that's some segregation now, segregation forever racism. Okay, did the motherfucking National Guard show up? <laughs> All right, was Jerry Jones there in the background looking on? Oh no, <laughs> Rose Brock, a German national, denies the allegations. And well, okay, somebody got to be telling the truth. These people's imagine they got water hose down and a German shepherd would almost sick on them. Come on now. Someone telling the truth. And I don't believe you are, sir. And also yeah. it's one of those things where 
you sprayed the wrong group of Negroes. You sprayed the Negroes that got degrees, the Negroes that, that know the law, the Negroes mm -hmm. that, you know, got everybody in lockstep. And you know they uppity? Chat. You know these the uppity Negroes? These are the Negroes that were like, I got two degrees to never experience racism. And you do that in this nice, quiet suburb? You fucked with me? I moved away from the rest of the Negroes and dressed differently. And you dare. Uh, Child, I, be mad. I don't blame you. Be, you. You fuck with the wrong Negroes. The suit states that DeRoso, chair of the emergency department at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York City, threw a party Saturday, September 17th for his Did sister. You, listen to what you just said. The chair of somebody's department at a hospital. You ain't no nobody. Right. I mean, come on. You know why he why he moved over there? I tell my mom I'll never be like any of those Negroes. Um, it was for his sister's forty seventh birthday, Rose Vani. Um, and they have pictures. I, I can show y'all pictures of the, of these blacks. And I mean, they look like upstanding blacks. I mean, they minding their business. That's his headshot, probably from the hospital right there. No facial hair. He's like, I'm safe. White people, I should be allowed to live in a house next to you. That's, I believe, his, uh, maybe his sister or just another guest at the party. Um, oh, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a guest at the party. Look at, she looks great. Look at that dress. That dress is it's everything. Beautiful. These are, these are black people that, you Child, know. with their hair up. You know, I'd have been mad too. These are black people that call the police. Okay. These are those type of black. I call the police. These aren't like you hose me down. I gotta think twice. I live on black side of town. I don't, I, don't, I look like I could be fit in the description. I gotta I gotta think how bad was the crime? Oh, it's just some water. I take a shower. You know, now now I'm inside mad, but at least the cops didn't come shoot. These blacks are not, they like, no, call the police. When they see this Balenciaga on me, I'm gonna be fine. Uh the gathering was held in his yard in his Forest Hill home. Uh, and included around 15 guests, most of whom were black or Latino. Uh, guests included Rigo Morales, a record executive who has worked with Eminem and 50 Cent, along with lawyers and bank bosses. Damn, banking bosses? That's what I said. He hit the wrong group of hit. Like I said, he didn't hit just anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a nine-course dinner at Fres Al Fresco Dinner cooked by TV chef Vanessa Cantal. Come on, nine-course dinner? Child, he, he messed with the wrong group of black folks. Cooked by TV chef Vanessa Contav or Contave, who won the Bravo reality cooking competition, Rocco's Dinner Party, in 2011. Uh, the party was winding down about 9.50. See, that's reasonable. That's not even 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And it's New York. Everything's noisy. Right. Uh, Everything the, is noisy. The female defendant known as Jane Doe entered the home uninvited with a large German shepherd and demanded that the music playing in the backyard be turned down. Contave or Contave, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, and her business partner, Shani Porter, feared the dog would attack and seriously injured them as it appeared menacing and aggressive. They went into the yard to inform DeRosso and his sister, who is a U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services asylum officer, about the complaint. Dr. DeRoso told the woman the party would be ending soon and request she leave his property before he returned to his yard to continue socializing. But soon after, Rosebrock, whose yard neighbors DeRoso's, took his water hose and began water hosing the guests in DeRoso's backyard to get them to disperse. Look, I'm, I'm not one of these type of people, okay? So... Take it with a grain of salt, okay? Take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. But I cannot imagine not whooping this man's ass. I'm not shaming the people because maybe I would have been so shocked that what happened, I would have just been like, what the fuck? And I walked off. You know, some people don't fight. You know, it's not. But man, I, I, in my life, maybe, and maybe I just have to have it happen to me. But I can't, I feel like, the water hose would trigger some sort of like ancestral DNA activation. And it would, I, I feel like the, my, the people in Alabama that fought with the folding chairs, 
we would have let them down to get up and just walk away. I would have just had to fuck up my nice gown. You know what I mean? I would have had to fuck up my. Oh, I can't imagine. But but look, I, it didn't happen to me. Maybe I I would have just called the police too. But ooh, Oof, my lord, ooh. Um, so yeah, uh, they said the scene was reminiscent of 1960s Birmingham, Alabama, when white law enforcement officers used fire hoses to douse, assault, and batter African Americans participating in civil rights demonstrations. How you just gonna live next to me, nigga? After you done sprayed me the fuck down, you think that's sorry. Sorry, I'm just saying. You think you just gonna check your mail, nigga, in my presence? You think we just gonna walk to the mailbox at the same time and I'm gonna just let you exist? <laughs> After you done sprayed me and my party gas down, bro. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rose Brock allegedly subjected the group to a prolonged attack until they were completely drenched. The police were called and two police officers responded to take a report, but there has been no follow-up since then. Oh, fuck you. Even though this incident should be investigated as a hate crime. Yes! The suit uh, accuses both Rose Brock and the woman of being racist. Why is she Jane Doe? Do y'all just not know her name? Because I put her motherfucking name in the streets. I guess they don't know her name. Like, Black Twitter, do your thing. Let's go. The suit adds each of the plaintiffs suffered economic losses as a result of the defendant's uh, conduct. Uh, unable to use their property for peaceful gathering, gathering and humiliated, put in fear, embarrassed, and degraded. Plaintiffs seek justice for the assaultive conduct, battery, and civil rights violations. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know what they, you know what they, well, I, because they, they're just embellishing at that point. I don't blame them. But they said they were celebrating with family and friends, all of whom were black or Latino except one. I would have thrown in there. And uh, many of were queer. I would put that in. It, <laughs> it was a hate crime of all you kinds. Never know. Some were disabled. You don't know. No, you People don't. was dealing with mental health issues. You don't know us, sir. It's all kinds of hate crime. We think you did it for those reasons too. Just all the all of them. The, uh, she she got an extra digit on her foot. So th- that's motherfucking. That's another type of hate. I don't know what that you you mad against six toe people. They, we need some more money. Uh, but yeah, uh, they said the guests remain deeply scarred by the alleged or did. Oh, that's another thing, and it's embarrassing. Yes, it your people is. came over to celebrate your birthday. Got spray water hose. You didn't even beat people up. Now we got a mass lawsuit. But it's also like, can I come down your house again? Hey, we have a cookout. I don't know, man. Last time I came down there, it turned into motherfucking the Edmund Pettus Bridge. I think I'm good. Right. Uh, and that was the whole point that they wouldn't have no more parties. Right. I come back down there, but like I had to bring the ghost of John Lewis with me to make this motherfucking party work. No, nah, I'm good. Uh, the civil rights claim in the suit that the incident violated Title Seven of the New York City Administrate Code. I think water hoses of people definitely violate something. Mm-hmm. How are you not just throwing fucking poison bones in their dog's yard? I don't. I'm sorry. I know the evil's coming out of me. Y'all don't know <laughs> this side of me. But this is uh, thing. This is uh, thing y'all don't understand about Libras. Uh, There's two types of peace yeah. for a Libra. But it's it's about being a mirror. I can have peace in the, hey, man, you leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. We don't like each other. Cool. Right. I'm cordial. I'll never be unprofessional about it. We don't fuck with each other. No problem. But there's another part of me that is very much, if you keep sending this energy my way, I'm going to send it right the fuck back. Forever. I'm fine. If you got the forever in you, I got the forever in me. <laughs> I try not to activate that part of me, so I, but it's I, there. Hell yes. Don't I, ever fucking, you, don't ever fucking forget it's in me. Baby, I tell I've everybody, done, everybody, everybody, everybody has a piece of them like that, no matter how kind and sweet and gentle and peaceful and joyous and all that shit. That's and that's another reason for 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 me. My anger is very slow. I might have things where I'm just frustrated. And I just go da 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 da, and then I'm going about my business. I don't hold on to shit. But yeah, 
if I get to the point with with that, yeah, it that right there might it literally might be a forever with you. I don't. How, one of us got to move. One of us got to move, bitch. What do you mean? You can't. I'm liable to put hands on you next time I see you, motherfucker. You can't just do that to somebody and then it's just okay. It's even not if I was okay. even if I was the neighbor that sprayed the person, I would move. Right. Because I would understand, like, obviously we don't just be walking to our cars at the same time in the morning no more. That's over. We can't be walking the same way towards the subway stop no more. That, how? I'm going to just be on the train at the same time you're on the train, look sitting across from you like, yeah, I sprayed you, but you ain't going to do shit, bitch. <laughs> how? I'm a, psh, how? Anyway, I zero to 100. This actually gets a Jakaris all around. And the, the biggest reason why I get a Jakaris is because they filed a police report. So that means the officers came and saw everybody was fucking wet. So they're not making up shit, which means they have shit on file. They have records. They have documentations and things like that stating that this shit fucking existed. Yes, we're going to court. Yes, I'm going to sue you. One of us are going to have to move, bitch. One of us got to go. And the way that they didn't follow up. Like, it's a Dracarys for me, too. Because Yes, the way they didn't follow like, up is fucked up. The, pol- the, the, the black people in this equation in this situation they did all the right shit right you know and i feel bad for them because it's it's never your fault as a black person when racism just fucking happens to you you didn't do shit but also i know we all know black people like this man they they make the right moves they do the right things mm-hmm. they try to you know they don't bother nobody don't they bother just, nobody mind their business they mind their fucking business and these racist white folks in this space were just like nah fucking them up fucking them up and they ain't gonna do shit about it either they call the police another one of the quote unquote right things to do right. it's never a right way to really handle racism anyway mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. just all the textbook shit black people supposed to do be respectable and act respectable and do didn't work for these folks just not and work. man oh uh, mm-mm-mm mm. And cars. not trying to find it, particularly them fucking New York prices. You know, that's probably a million dollar, two million, fifteen it million. It didn't even dollar sound home. like they rent it. It sounded like they own. Oh, yes. It's so hard to move in New York. Yes, it is. But somebody got moved. Or it's just, or we just, it's going to be the Hatfields and McCoys, bitch. What? That dog dead. I'm going to tell you that off top. I know the dog, y'all think that the white people listening, like, that's disgusting, right? The dog didn't do nothing. It chose the wrong fucking side, okay? And all them dogs from the civil rights videos could get it too. Fuck them. You was with the <laughs> wrong people, bitch. <laughs> you was on the wrong side. That's the one time I fuck with cats. Cats wouldn't have did that shit. Child, you would have better find a cat. You ain't never seen a motherfucking cat nine unit and shit. They don't got them. They don't got cat <laughs> cat police. Cats don't fuck with the cops. They like, no, a cab, bitch. We over here. <laughs> cats don't fuck with nobody. Right. Sick them. No. Why would I do that? Why would I fuck up my claws? The Ugh. fuck is this? Hey, y'all spray the water hose. I got to get wet. No, yeah, thank you. No, no, thank you. What a cat. I don't know. It's over there licking his paws or something, playing with some yarn. It's no fucking way. Anyway. <sighs> the cars. La- next one. <laughs> Last one. A whites only moms and tots group actively defended by conservatives as numerous non-whites only activities are common. Y'all gotta see the sign for this group. This is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> why does the sign look like it's from 1960? Why is this in black and white? Child, they took it back in the day. And look, they didn't have to make it black and white because Join Us 4 is in red. So they chose to make this look like a colors only sign. <laughs> What, what what they have to go to to the back of the house they know in order to get in what font is this when you make it racism you go, racism right when you go when you go to kinko's let me get the um let me get the woolworth font yeah <laughs> that's what you want do y'all have anything that looks like a colored no colors allowed sign what font would that be can i get the uh sit on the stools right Font. Do y'all have a Caucasian's new Roman font? Um, yes, I need that. I need that. Yes. Um, yeah, there appears this uh there appears to be a strong support for segregation in certain parts of the world. It's solely due to oh, look at this. Look at this. I've never even heard of this source before. So this is from the independent news. 
Now, this was suggested to me by my computer when you go to like the bottom left corner, it suggests news, tells you about the weather and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I click on this. Okay, I don't see your screen. And I know, I know. Okay. I'm just telling y'all. I'm just oh, telling y'all. Okay. Just believe me. I'm Hassan Minaj. Trust me without showing you. <laughs> okay. So when I click on this, it says it's from Newsweek. Okay. So I, I'll, I'll share my screen just so y'all can see this part. Okay. Um, how can I share the full screen? Entire screen. Okay. Look at look at look at this. So bottom left corner. Can y'all see what's happening on my screen? Mm-hmm. Okay, you see how the stories pop up, the weather, all this stuff, mm-hmm. right? Look right here. Whites only sign for Paris. What does it say? Newsweek. Yes. Okay. When I click on it, it goes to up independent news. When That's I, not Newsweek. Not Newsweek. And when I start reading it, this is solely due to the woke agenda as they are keen on separating black people from white people. However, when it's the other way around, it is seen as wrong. This is true both ways. The civil rights leaders fought for the rights of minorities, only for the woke culture to trample on it. This is such a biased ass white right wing rag that has somehow uh Why infiltrated. Can I do that? Yeah. Newsweek need to be on top Dracar is, of this. Your car is for Newsweek. Right, Newsweek, y'all letting y'all letting them take over y'all y'all links. Maybe it is time for me to get a Mac because I feel like Chab, Apple wouldn't do this. We might need to get a Mac. Y'all y'all Mac people might be right. Tim Apple wouldn't let wouldn't let this shit slide like this. They would have double checked the source, man. Fuck that article. Jakar's for everybody. All right. <laughs> yes. Now that we've discussed all that racism, time for us to be racist ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to get the race. 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 Never, we will beat the woke mob allegations every time. Ah! All you gotta do is play this segment. <laughs> They're like, I hate them. They the woke mob. It's like, uh, did, did, you, you, did sure? you see when they played Guess the Race? Uh, it was did you, pretty did you bad. Listen to the whole show. A drug dealer calls cops to report a theft. What? This is definitely a genre of news because I feel like this has happened multiple times where it's like, don't you know what you do for a living? Right! Uh, <laughs> come on in, officers. Here's all my drugs. Come on, I'll move that marijuana. No, that's not what I called y'all about. Um, Come on, have a seat. <laughs> Somebody stole my PlayStation. Now, I know I got drug dealing money enough to buy 12 PlayStation 5s, but I, it's the principle of the shit for me. <laughs> y'all didn't do y'all jobs. What do you mean I got the right to remain silent? <laughs> what? What do you mean? I'm breaking the law. Right. I called you. Uh, No, her name wasn't Miranda. That's not who Rob... Oh, these are my Miranda rights. <laughs> well, shit. Uh, when working in the field of illegal drug sales, it's never a good idea to contact police to complain that a customer robbed you. Cops say Eric Thomas, 33, called police in reference to a theft. Upon being contacted by the officers, Thomas stated he was selling marijuana and someone stole $10 from him while attempting to sell it. $10? You going to jail over $10? You called him over $10. You fitting to go to jail for moving weight over $10? Nigga, they can have that fucking $10. Oh, my God. While reporting the the theft... Thomas had 11 baggies of pot in his hands. Oh. They didn't even have to search for the evidence. You holding it? See, that's the thing. I had 12 bags of pot. He's supposed to give me $10. Look at it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight. That's a felony now. Uh, nine, 10, 11. Ooh, ah! class B, class B felony. Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't went up to E now. I'm assuming it's reverse. You go up. Right. He's like, up uh, the letter. I'm pretty sure marijuana is legal in Florida. They're like, no, no that's it's not. That's the mm-hmm. one thing Ron and, DeSantis and, and, won't let and, us do. And even if it was, you still can't distribute to sell. You, you can't, can't teach. You can't do this. You can't teach CRT, and you can't sell weed. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but yeah, um, it's it's illegal to possess marijuana with the intent to sell it. So he should have just said, "I'm smoking it all." Uh, he made spontaneous statements about getting robbed while attempting to sell the marijuana. Uh, he was holding more than 40 grams of pot when collared during the post-arrest search. 
Cops found two baggies containing cocaine in his wallet. Uh, he was charged with a pair of drug felonies and booked in the county jail where he remains locked up in lieu of $7,000 bond. In the past year, he's been convicted of marijuana, cocaine, and battery counts. Uh, <laughs> he was hitting people or he was selling batteries. I don't know. <laughs> ah, what? In, Something happened. In a pending case, uh, Thomas has been accused of possessing seven Ziploc bags of marijuana. The pot was discovered when Thomas emptied his pockets in the clear plastic tray at a court security checkpoint. Oh, my God. <laughs> in the court. He going in the court, nigga, in the court. Who is even giving you drugs to sell at this point? You're very bad at this. You're terrible at your job. Who the fuck put, you showed up to court for some shit you did and then put the some evidence in the train at the security checkpoint. Like, let me get that back, Flair. What? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, oh, and let, hold my gun, too. Hold my gun. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, why you at it? Uh, Thomas, who reportedly admitted. Oops, I think I forgot to empty it. Right. Oh, <laughs> shit. It was loaded. I had to say to y'all. Uh, he had, uh, I got that gun from this child I was having sex with. <laughs> right? Yeah, over by the puppy kennel. I'll have sex with those, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just had to get it off my chest. Just need to tell somebody. Need to know. I just had to let y'all know. Yeah, I was beating the old lady up the other day, and I said somebody is, need to know about this. Is that a camera? Wait a minute. Let me right. look straight into it. I took a selfie. I beat her up on Instagram Live. I just I, honestly, I just want the police job to be easy. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want to have to work hard. At y'all all. work. Y'all work way too hard busting these criminals. I'm gonna make the case easy for you. Uh, he reportedly admitted the pot was meant for sale. Uh, he was at the. County Justice Center last month to see the clerk of courts. All right, Karen, guess the race of Mr. Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas White. Karen says white. Let's check the chat room and see what they believe. Um, All right, we got to wait a second. It's always a little behind. Yeah, it's a delay. It'll take a few seconds. Mm Mm-hmm. For everybody to oh catch up goodness. to our voices. That is absolutely terrible. Oh, I'm surprised he's not on the dumb. Encyclopedia world, Brown couldn't vehicles. even make this this case two pages. Right? This don't make no sense. A uh, dumb criminal white says Tamara. Snow white like Taylor Swift. White sounds about white. White. Uh looks like everyone's going white on this one. The correct answer is, and everyone, you missed it. He's black. <laughs> Yeah. All them charges and shit over and right. over again. And right. They just let him keep coming. I don't know. He's black. That's definitely a black man in this picture. I mean, sorry. He didn't take the hint that this is not the job for him over and over again. It, it was like chance after chance was like, go away. This ain't the. This, you know, this job ain't working out for you. He, I'm going back to work again. Nigga, you keep getting caught and fired. I don't understand. Yep. Right, let's go to the next one. A Florida woman allegedly attacked two people at a pool for doing inappropriate stretches. What's inappropriate stretches? Amanda, uh, I mean, Amanda Ferragamo, 41, was arrested in Sumter County, Florida after the incident on early Sunday morning. A female victim told deputies she and the male victim were doing stretches when Ferragamo smacked and shoved them both. The female victim then stated the defendant accused them both of doing inappropriate activities and began to shove her and smack her across the face. The female victim has a red mark on her face indicating she was hit as well, said the affidavit. The deputies responded to the incident at 2.32 a.m. The male victim told the deputy she fucking attacked us. She's pissed. Deputies wrote an affidavit that the female victim had a red mark on her face. We already said this. Uh, the man and Ferragamo are connected in some way, which makes the incident domestic in nature. Connected in some way. Hmm. Uh, officials with the Sumter County Sheriff's Office didn't further explain the relationship. She was transported to the detention center with two counts of battery. She was released Monday afternoon. Karen guessed the race. Who am I guessing the race of the couple? The, the, lady the, the criminal, him? the woman who went to jail. She what, attacked him. What was her name? Her name is Amanda Ferragamo. Amanda Ferragamo? Mm-hmm. 
Ferragamo. No, I'm just joking. That's not how that song goes. I'm going to go white. Okay. Karen's going white. Let's check the chat room. Uh, see what they believe Mrs. Ferragamo's name is. Mm-hmm. I do think something nefarious was happening. I actually think she beat them up because maybe that's her man and they weren't stretching. They was down there doing something sexual. And then he they lied and said, oh, we was just stretching. Because it was 2.30 in the morning. Yes. What are you stretching at? Who stretched at 2.30 in the morning? Right. Nigga. To take a Peloton class then. What the fuck you doing? Right. <laughs> Who was stretching that pussy? <laughs> uh, Latino, spicy white. Up next, <laughs> cheaters. The confrontation. Right. No, no, no. Down, down, down. He's a man. The suspect is a man who's been stretching the truth. <laughs> and being very flexible in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Pale people pool drama. This sounds like some white retiree from up north type shit. On today's episode of Another World White, the correct answer is white. Why is her jaw so big? That itch, her jaw almost looked like a Muppet's jaw. Good morning, USA. <laughs> oh, yes, come on through, Stan. You do have that Stan jaw. She got like that real life Stan jaw. It is a running joke about his fucking huge, his fucking jaw is. <laughs> I got a feeling this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful day. day. Oh my God, what's up with her jaw? It's almost comedic. Right. This is a jaw dropping picture. <laughs> <laughs> she was dropping jaws he was dropping jaw draws and that was why he got beat up um all right well karen you're one and one let's go to the bonus round Yay! it's time to guess the race it's time to guess the race it's time to guess the race it's time to guess the race. Somebody in the chat room should get that quagmire jaw. Giggity. <laughs> Giggity. Uh, this is a story that you'll be seeing twice, Karen, because that's going to also be featured on Minimum Rage. What we do last week <laughs> on Keith and the Girl. <laughs> Shot at over an argument about curly fries. That's the allegation in a lawsuit filed against Jack in the Box and an employee. The shooting happened in 2021. But the attorney for the family who was just shot at just released a shocking video. ABC 13's Jessica Willie is live at the restaurant where it all happened, Jessica. Eric, attorney Randall Callanan has scheduled a news conference for tomorrow morning here at the Jack in the Box near Bush Airport. He tells me he recently got this video through a discovery request. The employee has already served her sentence, but in a lawsuit filed by that family from Florida, they say they want to still hold the restaurant accountable. The order a number two with curly fries after a mother and her six-year-old daughter landed in Houston. The father picked them up, placed the order at this jack-in-the-box on JFK Boulevard near Bush Airport. Fifteen minutes later, they were speeding out of the drive through trying to avoid gunfire. In just released video, employee Alania Ford seems agitated with customer Anthony Ramos. He is in the driver's seat, according to a lawsuit. His pregnant wife is in the passenger seat and their six-year-old daughter is in the back. They paid $12.99 for a combo, the lawsuit says, but didn't get the curly fries they ordered. Not even halfway into the dispute, the video shows Ford ready a gun. Minutes later, and with another employee, she throws ice and condiments through the window oh. before firing at least twice at the family. God damn! Ford was initially charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, but pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of deadly conduct, got one year deferred adjudication, and completed it, court records show, in June. The family from Florida filed the lawsuit after the guilty plea, claiming Jack in the Box was negligent for not keeping customers safe from potentially dangerous employees. In its original answer, Jack in the Box denied all allegations, writing they have no control over or legal responsibility for a third party like Ford. Her plea also prohibited. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that bullshit people talk. I don't give a fuck. It's Jack in the Box. I don't give a fuck about no third party. 
she's wearing your uniform. Right. That's why it's bullshit when they be trying to get around that shit. I don't give a fuck. It is. It says Jack in the box. Bitch, you're responsible. They really? They really I don't give a fuck if no agency hired them. They work for you. They really tried to be like, hey, look, that's between y'all. <laughs> don't care. That lawsuit is valid, bitch. It happened on your property. How is that even legally allowed to be a defense? Right. Hey, man, look, people just be doing shit, man. Just because they work at our location don't mean like they affiliated with us. <laughs> Nigga, I would guess what? If it had been uh Billy Bob in the box, I'm gonna put my black ass here. I want a jack in the box. She don't even really work there. She just walked in and started serving customers one day, and we just let her stay. So, like, I don't what, see what, what they what, got to do with what, us. What does her paycheck say? Jack in the box, right? Okay. They gonna make that dude with the baseball on his head appear at the courtroom. Mister mm -hmm. Box Mr. signed this. Mister Box. Oh my God! Inhibits her from possessing a firearm in the future. The family and their attorney returning to the crime scene for a news conference tomorrow morning. Jessica Willie. They braver than me. I'd never come back. I'd be doing my press conference at Burger King. I'm like, hey, it's safe over here. Um, all right, Karen, guess the race. I'm gonna go the, the person shooting was black. All right, Karen saying black mm. for uh the what is her name? Mm. Why don't they show her name? Oh, Alania Fantasia Ford. Oh, black. Okay, Karen's going doubling on the black. Let's check the chat room, see what they believe. <clears throat> black under that white clown makeup. Nigga shit, says Trey. <laughs> the nigga shit. Um, that's hilarious it's probably a delay yeah also well, i can't wait to show y'all this video the way she pulled this gun out is amazing arby's would never black well they never have customers to shoot black or black a bitch black the correct answer is black <laughs> the gat in the box not the gat in the box <laughs> it's the gat in the box uh so y'all gotta see this video man um, I'll, I'll, I'll rewind it. Um, I guess I can turn the sound down so y'all can see how she did it. But like, she, like she was going, she was really going at this person. Um, I mean, like, look, she going to go throw some shit in the, she threw some shit over there. Then she put, that's when she pulled out the gun. They drove off. Oh, they didn't want the smoke then. I do wonder what they were saying about them curly fries. But like at one point they even show her uh like throwing ice onto them. <gasps> like it through the window. I mean, damn. I mean, what what I mean what could they have said that would have caused that reaction? I I, I don't I, they said something. I mean, I don't want to assume, but I just but, but, they but said yeah, the N-word. So, what the so, fuck? Something happened for her to respond like or, that. Or just they were the 30th person. They would have, you know. Yeah, like like you said, this shit eventually adds up. Well, you're like, oh, I've had enough of customers today. But she wasn't playing that shit. She's, she's like, get the fuck out my window. Okay, first of all, everyone mad. He mad he paid $12.99 for a combo that was $6.99 just a few years ago. You see how she pulled that God gun out? damn! She pulled that gun out like the equalizer. She pulled it out real smooth. Oh, everybody knows she carry. Right. I don't mean no harm. Like, like she does this all the time. She pulled that gun out. Like, see, now they're gonna have. I'm gonna have to pop a cap today. Her employee is still trying to fuse the situation, but this woman got a gun. Like that. You're right. That means she pulled a gun out all the time because nobody ran out the restaurant. The woman's still nope. trying to stop. Her, like, come on, don't shoot him. Mm -hmm. Not, not again. Come mm -hmm. on. The way she pulled that out of her pocket, everybody know she ain't the one to fuck with. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, wouldn't be surprising. If somebody, if that that place really gets robbed, because she'd be like, "Oh, I got one too, dog." Yeah, they probably do the robbing over there. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's guess the race. All right, let's get out of here on some sword ratchetness. <laughs> they said something to her. She was like, "Oh, I got your bitch." Mm hmm. You know what she said? She she said two things. Either she said you got the right one or the wrong one. Whatever it is, it's wrong. <laughs> whatever ah! yeah. now, whatever it is is right yeah whatever it is 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 right and it's wrong you got the right one and you got the wrong one yep all right so ratchet this time 
Um, man, the news article attached to this has a video, and it's only 14 seconds, and it's not one of those picture videos. How could they summarize this in 14 seconds? How, I, I can't wait to hear this. Quickest one ever. New tonight, assault with a samurai sword. A Jersey City man accused of injuring someone with that weapon. Police say Daryl Colburn took out the sword while arguing with another man. He's facing aggravated assault and weapons charges. That's it. Mm. All right, well, shit, that was a short one. Straight to the point. Um, all right, <laughs> straight to the point, short one. They cut to the case. Um, <laughs> Tim the fat. Yeah, took it to the hilt. I don't know. All right, y'all, that's it. We'll be back tomorrow for Walking Dead Wednesday. Thanks for listening. Until then, I love you. I love you, too. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Peace.